having brought us a handful of interesting left-field petrol and plug-in hybrid performance models since its launch as a brand in its own right in 2018. Cupra's gradual transformation towards being EV only starts in UK showrooms this month. As its first electric offering, the Cupra Born, goes on sale. The hatchback is available initially in one mechanical guise only as Cupra works through the final throes of its semiconductor supply problems. And that's the 201 bhp, 58 kilowatts hour born driven here. A cheaper entry level model, 148 bhp and 45 kwh, and a slightly more powerful one, 227 bhp and 77 kwh, will both follow later in the year. There's no word yet on the range topping, dual motor version. For the time being, trim levels range from V1 to V3 and prices from just under 35,000 British pounds to just under 42,000 British pounds which means none of the born variants, save perhaps for the forthcoming 45 kilowatts hour model, will qualify for the UK government's 1,500 British pounds plug-in car grant. But the standard kit count is fairly generous, giving you 18 inches alloy wheels, adaptive cruise control and Cupra's 12 inches touchscreen infotainment system as standard. The Bourne's 135 kilowatts DC rapid charging capability is available only with a range topping 77 kilowatts hour battery. The rest charge at a peak rate of 120 kilowatts. This is, as should be quite apparent, Cupra's slightly sportier, more stylish and marginally more expensive take on the Volkswagen ID3. Although in the metal rather than photos, it's a more convincing prospect than it may make it sound. Cars mean a stare. More aggressive bumpers and lower stands give it a curbside presence that the i3 lacks. While RV3 test car's interior was made out of an upholstered with a richer and more appealing mix of materials. For the greater relative allure of the Bourne's exterior styling and its cabin, it's easy to imagine why people might prefer it to an equivalent higher-end ID3 especially if as Cupra promises, more favorable residual values make the Bourne's cost on monthly finance little more expensive. The Kaz Gracie textiles, bronze-colored trim accents and soft touch dashboard moldings make it a pleasant place in which to spend time, even if the Volkswagen Group infotainment system still wants too much of your attention while driving and still has some glaring usability issues. Whether people will buy the Bourne on the relative merits of its driving experience seems more questionable, but it's possible. Cupra has not only fitted shorter coil springs to the Bourne than the ID3 uses but also wider tires for a higher grip level, a more direct variable ratio steering setup as standard, the same steering is optional on the ID3, and a retuned stability control system. Dynamic chassis control adaptive dampers are an option. Our test car didn't have them but you don't need them in order to ride perfectly comfortably. Even in only mid-range form. The Bourne has plenty of power and response when accelerating up to motorway speeds. It feels performance car quick when picking up from the urban limit and speeding up on slip roads, although in give and take motoring around the national speed limit, the torque of its electric motor doesn't feel quite as energetic. The Bourne also has marginally stronger lateral grip levels, more level body control and better steady state handling balance than the ID3, as well as a shade more rear-driven fun factor around tighter bends cross-country roads, there's just enough bite and swivel about the car's handling and precision and composure about its body control to keep you interested at the wheel, but only just. Capra could certainly have delivered better brake pedal feel here and find a quick fire control of trailing throttle energy regeneration to really seal the deal. Some efforts to add driver appeal, such as synthesized engine noise, we can be glad that Capra didn't see fit to bother with. But if it had been more innovative with its various invitations to the driver to really engage with what they are doing, it might have created a markedly more absorbing car in the end. Keener drivers might just about see enough in the Born to pick it over rivals at just the right price. But if you could stretch to a Kia EV6 instead, I suspect you would. Those as attracted to this car for other reasons, however, it should hold a pretty broad-based appeal. It's not the sort of car that you would expect of a fully independent Capra brand still setting up shop as a default pick for enthusiasts to be in a hurry to introduce, and judged as the standout alternative to a compact petrol performance car that you might have expected it to be. It actually has most of the same limitations that figure with EVs more widely. But it's certainly got more handling dynamism than the average sub 40,000 British pounds EV.
In light of where the market is right now, and considering everything else the Bourne offers, a little bit to get excited about might well prove to be enough. Model tested. Cupra Bourne 58 kWh V3. Price, 38,390 British pounds. Prices tested, 38,390 British pounds electric motor S. 1X permanent magnet synchronous motor, rear mounted. Drive battery, 58 kilowatts hour. Usable, lithium iron, liquid cooled. Drive line layout, rear engined, rear wheel drive. Power 201 bhp. Torque 229 pounds FT0 62 mph 7.3 seconds. Top speed 199 miles per hour. Curb weight. DIN. 1811 kilograms. Battery size 58 kilowatts hour. Usable. Energy efficiency 4.0 to 3.4 mpkwh.